Thank you for joining us. I am delighted to have Tim Takash with us. Tim, it's really great to see you right here in Tucson. Good to see you too. Thank you so much for coming down and being part of our season reveal, our 19th season, our 22-23 season. We're gonna kick it off in a big way in our, with our first program with a piece called Helios, the Jew of Rain. Tell us about Helios. What is Helios? So it's huge. It is huge. It's it's a, a journey through our solar system, uh, planet by planet, starting from the outskirts of the solar system and working our way in toward the sun. And for each each planet is its own movement. And the, the text is either inspired by uh, the mythology of the planet's name or the science of, of the planet itself, how it orbits, what it's made out of. Um, and all the, those stories are sort of always drawn back to humanity and how can... Yeah. How can we be better people? How can we live our lives in a better way? Um, to inspired by what's around us and what we're surrounded by. It's so cool. And what what was the 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 genesis of the idea? You were commissioned for this work. Is that is that correct? It's sort of. I so the idea started started here. I was on tour, um, sing, still singing with Contus, mm -hmm. and I was in the van and and I was just trying to figure out. Ah, uh, so. Zoom out a little bit. Yeah. And as a composer, there's a lot of pressure to figure out who, like, who you are and what you have to say. And what is your voice and how is it distinctive from other composers? And that, that's been a long journey for me over, over time. And I remember thinking, God, what, how, can I, how can I dig into myself and what's true to me and what I'm interested in that could uh, manifest itself in concert music? Yeah. And I thought, okay, well, I like science fiction, I like science, I like space, I like math, I like all these yeah. things. Maybe my uh, my contribution is to look at the solar system and make music of the planets. It's really cool. Yeah. I mean, and but you're you're hearing yourself a little bit because you, we also had the benefit of performing a wonderful setting of a Christmas carol mm -hmm. of yours. This was in the moon of winter time. Um, just an excellent setting. Thank you. Um, and you know, that is, um, a little gem and this is, this feels like a big masterpiece. Yeah. I mean, this is 65 minutes Yeah, yeah. An unaccompanied choir. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a tour de force yeah. for a choir. And you've talked about the, the, the big idea of the, the it doesn't get much bigger than exploring mm -hmm. the solar system. system. Yeah. I mean, you know, geez, you need to think bigger, Tim. <laughs> um, but but then then you got to come up with these words. So we're talk about the words. Where did the words come from? Yeah. Well, I I um, I knew I wanted each planet story to be unique to it. You know, inspired by whatever it was. I knew I wanted to include Pluto. I was an early decision. I was like, so it's still a planet, right? All right. So it's in my in my my piece. It is. It's a dwarf planet, but okay. who's counting? Right? You're right. Um, but I I knew that that I, I wanted to include that, and so then it was like a it's like a um, a treasure hunt, right? To go find yeah. words. And my first instinct was to commission the whole thing, to commission the words for the entire piece, and then I thought, well, there's got to be something out there. I need to start somewhere. So looking for poetry that that didn't just talk about the planets, but again had that other layer of humanity to it. And so yeah. a lot of the, the first things that I would find were. Saturn's big. It's got rings. It's made like like the the well, school, know that. the school text version yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of these of these planets. I'm like, that's not enough, yeah. right? That's sure. That's like a surface level. What that is, but what does it mean? And so right. I knew I needed to dig deeper. Um, and so I, I stumbled upon some some translations of of early poets like Ovid yeah. and Virgil, and those were easy because they're in the public domain. I knew I could get to them. Yeah. Um, I I found. Some of the other things that I found were were existing contemporary poets and poems that were out there, mm -hmm. and when I discovered Patricia Monahan's work, who is a late poet uh, from the Midwest, there's a lot of science in there. There's a lot of humanity. I thought that was the perfect blend of both for what I was yeah. after. But then I also wanted a commission text, so I I put together a list of the planets that were unspoken for, and I, I emailed about six or eight of my my favorite poets and said, "This is what I'm after." Pick a planet that you want yeah, to be a, yeah. a part of this. Yeah. And I got some emails back for that. So what was neat is that constructing the libretto over time, uh, the theme of the entire piece emerged from that. So I didn't know what I was trying to say with the mm. whole piece at first, but yeah. as these poems were floating to the surface and coming together, I thought, oh, 
this is what it's about. Yeah. It's about chaos and order and the, the, the combat between those two, how they work together, how they're a part of our lives. Right. Um, and that sort of made itself clear in, in that journey. Yeah. What's the common thread then? I mean, there's chaos and order, but what's the take home message, especially that you want our listeners to? I think the, the message is that they both exist, yeah. right? And you think about microcosm of your life yeah. and, and what you can control and what you can't. Yeah. And then you think about the universe yeah. and how it's all like a, it's like a machine, but then there's also these wild card elements that show up and who knows how they're going to interact with each other. Yeah. Right? Um, but as people, it's knowing the difference between the two and knowing how to recognize chaos and if it's something you can actually manage and like draw in closer. And so as we work from Pluto all the way into the sun through Mercury, the message is, yes, it's chaos out there, but you have a choice to make and it's your decision which direction you wanna go. And that poem from Mercury says, the pendulum only swings in one direction, but you have the choice to make it swing in any direction you choose. And I love that message, I just yeah. love it. Yeah. Yeah, very powerful and like you said, applicable to to anybody in, in wherever they find themselves right. in life. So, um, okay, so you got the texts. Yeah. Then what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, and so, and the texts didn't come all at once either. Yeah. I started writing some of the music before I had all the texts. And so the first movement I wrote was Neptune. It was for a workshop in Minneapolis with the premiering choir, the singers, Minnesota choral artists. Great. And Matt was like, can we just kick this thing off and will you do a movement for this workshop? I said, yeah, let's dive in. So I wrote Neptune first, again, public domain poetry, I didn't have to worry about anything. Um, and I really wanted to crack open the soundscape of what, how, how, does, how does space music, gold yeah. music sound how, like? Sound? Yeah. And so I played with a lot of glissandi, I played with a lot of um, tremolos and some of the voices and really just wanted to explore the soundscape of acapella choir. Yeah. And so from there, it was, it was a challenge of of proposing movements to individual commissioners because I couldn't find somebody to just write the check for the whole thing. Yeah. So when a choir would approach me and say, we want you to write something for our choir, I'd say, well, here's a couple poems I could do, or I could write you Pluto, <laughs> and that'll be part of this bigger thing. <laughs> and who thing. doesn't want Pluto? Right, who doesn't want Pluto? <laughs> Everybody wants Pluto. Okay. Um, so seeing it come together movement by movement over time and um, putting those pieces together and knowing which movements were still out there and then after five of them had been written, seeing what was missing in the story, seeing what was missing musically, pacing-wise. I, I wrote a, a tenor bass movement on Mars, yeah. but hadn't yet written a treble movement, so I knew that had to be something out there. Yeah. Um, I, knew, I had written a, a piece called Moon. Well, actually, it wasn't called Moon. It was called Everything is Made of Light, and it was for the group Roomful of Teeth, which yeah. is this rock star oh, ensemble. Yeah. Um, and later on in the process, I thought, oh, this should be Moon, because it has the moon in it. And it was a wild uh, exploration of sound and vocal techniques. And I thought this should become a part of Helios, like easily. Yeah. And so once I put that in the piece, I mined that piece for gestures and motives and melodies for future movements. So you'll see things from Moon show up throughout the piece only because I decided to use it. So really like putting a puzzle together where all the pieces are blank, right? Yeah. And you sort of get to decide how they how they go together. So it was a, it was a journey for sure over a couple of years before it all came oh, together. Yeah, that's a, what an incredible journey. It's going to be a journey for us in taking this odyssey through through the solar system. So do you have a favorite uh, favorite planet? I mean, we all both like Pluto. Out. Yeah. Uh, so one of my favorite ideas for movements is mm -hmm. Mars. And um, so you think about Mars, you think about the god of war. Yeah. You think about Holst, you think about um, the Imperial March from Star Wars has a yes. lot of Mars in it, you know? Yes, yes. Um, and I thought, that's not what I want to do. And it's such, a, it's such a typical masculine way of going about that Greek god. And so I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn that on its head. And in, a, in researching that planet, we had sent a spirit rover up to, to drive around the planet and take samples yeah. and look at what's up there. And while it was up there, it broke one of its wheels. Still functional, but it was dragging this busted wheel through the surface of the planet and making all these marks and scratches. And it was in looking through those marks down deeper into the planet, we were able to see that there was evidence of water that once existed there. Right. And I thought, now that's a metaphor I can get after yeah. for masculinity, how we're so often wearing these veneers, these, these, uh, yeah. these shields, these masks for people yeah. of how we're maybe supposed to appear as yeah. men. Yeah. to society, to each other. And I thought, 
you it's so it's always so necessary to crack through that to find out what's underneath. Yeah. And so I went to a, a poet that I worked with before, Bill Reichert, and I said, Bill, you'd be perfect for this. I, this is the idea, and I want you to write a poem about masculinity, but through this lens. And he just nailed it. He yeah. just nailed it. Yeah. So again, it's using the planets as inspiration for who we are and who yeah. we can be yeah. and how we treat each other. Yeah. Talk about Earth a little, because that's obviously our home. And I mean, how does Earth figure into this? And, you know, we tend to think of Earth as being the center of the universe, but I mean, we're just the speck in this, yeah. in this universe, in this, yeah. in this solar system. So, so how does Earth fit in here? Well, Earth is, Earth is the, the linchpin for all these things, yeah. right? Because this is all our projection out into, yeah. the, into the galaxy, into the solar system. And so Earth is about how we've assigned values and characters to these celestial bodies, but Earth is the only place where they exist. Yeah. No other planet has war. Yeah. You know, they don't have life. They don't have love. They don't have faith. Yeah. That is special to us yeah. and to this sphere right here. Yeah. And so that's, a, that's one of the movements that brings things down to the ground mm. and to where we are. The other movement that does that is Saturn. Mm. And that's a, a semi-autobiographical poem by Tony Silvestri. And he talks about being a child and looking up through a telescope at the heavens and just being wowed by everything he saw up there. So that's another movement that, that keeps it here on the ground. Everything else is sort of exploring what is out there. That's so cool. Is this the longest or biggest piece you've ever written? Yeah. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is so cool. Um, I, we, we are thrilled to be able to, to perform this music, but there's a whole other component to the, to the music that's um, going to be special to and add just to the overall experience. Tell us, tell yeah. us about that. So um, my wife is Jocelyn Hagen, uh, who's famous for her Da Vinci piece, Notebooks. I, I've heard. You've known this piece, right? <laughs> um, and so watching her work through the process of adding, not adding projections, but writing with projections yeah. in mind was fascinating. And she's, she's a role model of mine, a composer role model of mine. And watching her work through that was fascinating. Yeah. And she kept saying, you got to do this. Like, this is a yeah. lot of fun. And what about Helios? I'm like, yeah, but I'm considering for like a concert stage or nothing. And then after it premiered, I was like, you know, I think that would add a, a great element to it. I think there's music in Helios that could really be supported by imagery. And I think it's, I think the music takes us away from our seat in one way, but I think the projections will do something else. So I, I sort of set out on this journey to find visual projections to accompany the entire piece from yeah. measure one to the very end. And, and how do you do that? Who do you go to? And, and, and do you go to that person and say, I've, I've got these ideas myself, or do you just kind of, all right, here's yeah. the text, here's the music, come up with something? How, how yeah, what's cool is that it's, it, we're flipping the, the scales. I'm no longer the artist, I'm the commissioner, right. in a way, right? Yeah. And so looking for artists, looking for animators, uh, illustrators that could help bring this to life. And so I did a lot of searching online to try to find people. And we had short email conversations where I'd propose what I wanted to do and they'd say, that sounds intense, <laughs> maybe somebody else. Um, and then I, um, I noticed the work of Deborah Johnson who goes by the moniker Candy Stations. And she had done a lot of projections for live concert music. And there, there was the perfect blend of um, really clean lines and uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's very mathematical, but also organic at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that's, that's what I'm after, those things. So I, I called her up and pitched her the idea um, and, and we, were, we were off and we were just that's going cool. together. And so her reading the texts and me sort of giving her the, the subtext of it. Yeah. So this is what the poem says, but this is what I'm approaching it with. Not wanting to step on toes or do her job for her, but just to say Uranus is about depression. Mars is about masculinity in a strange way, in a different way. Yeah. You know, Venus is, is about the strength of women in the fact that Venus is the only planet that orbits in the opposite direction of every, every other planet. Right? I, I, these are the things I want to see. Yeah. You decide how to do it, but this is important to me. Yeah, cool. So how's it going to work? I mean, in performance, because this is going to be the first time, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's you'll be the right very, here in Tucson. This is like, how's it feel to be a guinea pig? You know what? I it's kind of exciting. I love it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, it'll just it'll be y'all on stage singing, and then a, a screen wherever you put it with these projections that are uh, more or less queued up to different musical moments, so that 
somebody will be running the projections from the back mm -hmm. and saying, once they get to measure 32, I hit space bar and we move on to the okay, next Okay, so it's going to be timed exactly to, to yeah. certain moments. And, and not, not tracked to the conductor like Da Vinci was, yeah. but waiting for certain musical events to make sure they line up. Okay, yeah. Really cool. I, well, thank you for allowing us, so, True Concord, of course. And Tucson to be the first uh, to, to do this. Of course. You're right. I mean, Jocelyn's Da Vinci was a huge hit. Yeah. And, you know, we listen with our eyes and our ears. I mean, and there's something powerful about engaging, you know, those senses yeah. in, in that way. So kudos to you for having the vision mm -hmm. to do that. I mean, first of all, to write this music, because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's incredible music. And thank it's going to be a, a wonderful challenge and opportunity for our artists and for our audiences. But then to add this new dimension to it, I think it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be out of this world. Oh, look at you. <laughs> That's the last time you get to say that. <laughs> oh, okay, no promises. <laughs> I'll give you one. <laughs> so this is Timothy Takash's Helios. Um, it's a piece that's two years old? Yeah. Okay, two years old. But we are giving the premiere of the visual component to it in a piece that takes us on an incredible odyssey through the solar system. Thank you, Tim. You're very welcome. Looking forward to it. Me too.